The robotics industry is on the verge of a multi-trillion dollar explosion, and it's not hyperbole to say the ground is shifting under our feet. It feels like electricity, and the internet rolled into one, remapping how we move, ship, heal, build, and live. We're talking about opportunities that could dwarf the early dot-com era, with asymmetric setups for those willing to do the homework and handle the volatility. Because I'm breaking down three robotics names, with massive upside potential each, leading its niche, each capable of compounding real-world advantages into real shareholder value. And one is putting breakthrough mobility within reach for patients who've even waiting years for this moment. Let's dive into Arbe Robotics. Arbe, a company that lives where perception meets survival. Cameras can be brilliant until glare blinds them or darkness swallows detail. We're not talking about yesterday's radar that just estimates distance and angle. Imagine a child stepping between parked cars at dusk, a cyclist cutting across a lane in a downpour. A truck merging through Spraythes aren't hypothetical. They're the exact moments when the system either sees enough or fails, and the difference is everything. The tech is wild. Hi Chanokao, Mimo based. A wave radar that estimates not only where something is, but how it's moving. How its micromotions distinguish it from background noise, and how that motion is changing second by second. Arby talks about 100x. The resolution of legacy automotive radar if they deliver that consistently at scale. You're looking at a new baseline for what good enough means. It's the kind of leap that tends to force competitors to play catch up. Not because of a clever marketing story, but because the physics advantage is real. And the beauty is that this isn't a replace everything else argument. It's radar stepping into its rightful role as a backbone modality, fusing with cameras and LIDAR, to provide redundancy that actually holds up on a wet Tuesday night in November. The automotive world is defined by brutal standards, long validation cycles, and Tier 1 South that act as gatekeepers to every major OEM on Earth. They've been stacking design wins in relationships that move them along the gauntlet of B samples, C samples, and into start of production. Early stage numbers can be frustrating, small revenue, cash burn, volatility that will shake out anyone with a weak stomach. But if you understand the cadence of auto programs, you know that design and decisions are like planting oak trees. Regulation is a tailwind to safety ratings and new standards in the US, Europe and Asia are pushing OEMs to improve AEB performance at night and in bad weather. If an imaging radar stack materially improves those metrics, Adoption becomes not just prudent, it becomes obvious. Autonomous trucking where a misdetection isn't just dangerous, it's catastrophic. Drones and ground robots handling inspection, delivery, and security under all conditions. The scalability is exciting because it frees the tech from the single-track automotive ramp and opens parallel lanes of adoption. You're not trying to guess the winning robot. You're buying the sense organs every robot will want. High risk. Absolutely. But asymmetric if the technology continues to validate and those tier one pipelines convert to production scale revenue. Watch for milestone signals. Additional design wins, SOP timing, unit shipments, and any news that expands beyond passenger vehicles. Now let's talk. Serve, robotics, serve, which might be the most quietly transformational consumer-facing automation story out there. Human labor is the largest variable costs in last mile delivery. And it creates a ceiling on affordability and a floor under the fees that make customers churn. Serve small, electric, autonomous sidewalk robots attack that costs structure head-on. Slashing per delivery costs while improving consistency. And they do it with machines that are friendly enough to wave at, bright enough to notice from across the street, and clever enough to navigate curb cuts, crosswalks, and the chaos of a busy block. The tech stack blends vision, GPS, and ultrasonics with remote human oversight for those inevitable weird moments construction detours blocked sidewalks or the occasional dog who decides to inspect a new friend. That hybrid model is the practical bridge between today's messy cities and fully autonomous delivery at scale. Each route completed pushes more data into the system, training the robots to recognize patterns like where scooters tend to block pathways at 6 p.m., how certain intersections behave on game nights, or which alleys cool down faster and attract foot traffic. That data flywheel matters. It makes each new deployment smarter than the last. And it's a moat if they keep collecting it faster than rivals. Safety and reliability are on T just a regulatory box 
to check they re the currency of trust, with cities and with partners who live and die. By on-time delivery, integration directly into Uber's order stream means serve Dosen. T have to win a consumer app war or stitch together a patchwork of local contracts. The plan to deploy up to as many as 2,000 robots puts real numbers behind the story, translating what could be a cute pilot into something operationally meaningful. The economics are compelling. Once the robot is deployed, energy costs are tiny, there are no breaks or tips, and uptime can extend into the early hours when human couriers are scarce and expensive. You can imagine new categories prescriptions, bakery runs, convenience items where the math only now makes sense. Robot Sesu service adds a layer of recurring revenue and smoother cash flows for sir. While letting merchants and platforms expand delivery without ballooning labor costs, there are real hurdles. City by city rules can be a maze. In public sentiment matters, one viral incident can trigger a pause faster than any algorithm update can roll out. Hardware is hard. Reliability, manufacturing yield, supply chain resilience, and unit cost curves all have to trend the right way. Operations at scale require smart scheduling, battery swap or charging logistics, vandalism deterrence, and weather strategies. Labor remains tight. People now expect stuff to show up fast. Municipalities are starting to see autonomy not as a novelty, but as a tool to reduce congestion and emissions. If serve executes, tele operation ratios should improve, city permits should expand, and their robots should become a normal part of the urban fabric. In a few years, you might think it a sod to see a person biking dinners around at 10 p.m. The same way hailing a taxi on the street now feels antique. Let's shift from sidewalks to recovery rooms, from on-demand fries to something achingly human, mobility, dignity, and the chance to reclaim everyday life. Lifewood LFWD, formerly Rewalk Robotics, is building robots not to replace people, but to lift them up little. The Rewalk exoskeleton lets individuals with paralysis stand and walk, sometimes even navigate stairs depending on the model and training environment. If you've ever seen someone take those first steps after years in a wheelchair, you know this is bigger than specs or margins. Shoulders drop, eyes rise. Beyond the emotion, the medical benefits are tangible. Fewer pressure sores, improved circulation, its independence stitched into hardware and delivered with software. Anti-gravity treadmills use differential air pressure to unweight a patient, simulating anywhere from a small reduction to a dramatic lightening of body weight. That opens up training windows earlier after injury or surgery, less athletes rehab with reduced impact, and gives older adults a safer path to regain confidence. If rewalk is about giving steps back to those who lost them, Alter-G is about making those steps possible sooner, safer, and more often across a massive spectrum of conditions orthopedic recovery neurologic rehab, post-stroke therapy, and performance. And because outcomes aren't theoretical, they show up in the data and in the daily progress therapists witness. This dual-platform approach matters for investors because it transforms a single product story into an ecosystem. Sell a device once, then support it for years with service, maintenance, training, and consumables. That recurring revenue smooths the ride and deepens relationships. And here's the catalyst that could change the slope of the curve. Insurance reimbursement. Medicare coverage for eligible rewalk users is a breakthrough that Dose and T just unlock wallets it. Legitimizes the modality. Every new payer who follows lowers friction for the next one. And clinics that might have hesitated can now justify the investment against reimbursable programs. The total addressable market is enormous. Spinal cord injuries are just one slice. Stroke survivors number in the millions globally. Put differently, the problem is and T, if they're estimated, as how fast the infrastructure can expand to meet it. Training protocols must be efficient and scalable. Clinicians must be supported. Device reliability has to be rock solid, and the company needs to be shrewd about capital as it grows. But LifeWord isn't hoping to be allowed into the room. It's in the room already, with FDA cleared products, peer reviewed evidence and payer momentum. It's that fundamentals lineup. More units placed, higher utilization, increasing reimbursement, and a broader portfolio that captures value throughout the continuum of care. If you're building a clinic's rehab offering, the combination of Alter-G and exoskeletons allows you to guide patients from low-reduced early steps to full weight-bearing function and beyond. Better outcomes. 
drive referrals, which drive revenue, which drives more investment of flywheel, that rewards whoever leads the standard of care. What ties all three of these companies together is that they aren't trying to ride hype, they re-engineering answers to hard problems that have blocked progress for years. In cars, perception in difficult conditions is the choke point. In delivery, labor, economics constrict scale. In rehab, access, and reimbursement lock people out of life-changing mobility. RB Serve and LifeWord are pressing precisely on those pain points with technology that doesn't just demo well, it solves real constraints. None of this is risk-free. Hardware timelines slip. Regulators zig and zag. Competition can come from incumbents with deep capital or upstarts with new tricks. Early stage financials can be harsh. Small revenue, negative EPs, and cash burn as they build capacity. That's why you size positions thoughtfully. You track milestones instead of vibes. And you remember that a multi-year horizon is where the real compounding happens. This isn't a slot machine. It is a set of businesses that could anchor critical layers of robotics and automation for a decade or more if they execute. Investing is personal and probabilities. You might prefer the elegance of a B2B chip vendor riding OEM ramps via tier one partners. You might want the visceral immediacy of robots rolling down your block, cutting delivery times and costs right now. Or you might be pulled toward the mission-driven edge of tech that hands people back the keys to their independence. All three are valid. All three are volatile. And all three could be ten beggar candidates if product market fit tightens, unit economics scale, and adoption crosses the chasm. My playbook is simple. Follow the design wins. Production milestones, deployment counts, reimbursement decisions, and proof points that reduce uncertainty. Keep an eye on margins. Gross margin expansion is a tell that the hardware cost curve is bending the right way. Listen to what customers say when they renew or expand, because repeat business is the sincerest form of product love. One last thing before we wrap this up. This is not financial advice. I'm sharing how I think about the space and where I see asymmetric setups, but your risk tolerance, time horizon, and portfolio contexts are yours alone. Volatility will be a constant companion here. Use it, or it will use you. If you're into deep dives on high growth names, you know what to do, hit like, subscribe, and if you want exclusive stock notes and bonus analysis, join the stocks galore. Patreon linked in the description. Now I want to hear from you. Which sector do you think has the most explosive upside over the next decade autonomous vehicles? Sidewalk delivery or medical robotics and why? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Tell me what I missed and let's get smarter together.